And continuing with our series of Bass Fishing 101, today we're going to be talking about fishing plastics. Now these are going to be your little worms, your brush hogs, those types of things. Why you should pick certain ones over other ones and, and why they work. Frankly, there's a million choices out there that you can buy and, and sometimes baits are designed to catch the fishermen, not the fish in my opinion. So you got to be careful with what you choose. So today we're going to talk about baits that are really good that are going to help you catch fish right off the bat. These are going to be some of your soft plastic baits that you were going to Texas rig and we're going to show you how we do that. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is what is a Texas rig. Texas rig is a pretty simple setup. You have your line followed by a slip sinker, a bullet weight that you slide on just like this connected to your hook. Now this is a Gamagatsu offset shank EWG hook and this has, I just use a kind of a modified Berkley knot. You can tie any knot that, that you want on that. So that's what a basic Texas rig is. Then you mount some sort of plastic on there and you fish it on the bottom. And you know, obviously it can get bit on the fall. It can get bit a lot of different ways, but that is the basics of a Texas rig. So I'm gonna show you how I set that up. First of all, we're gonna take our main line here. Got our tag in there that you might be able to see. I'm using fluorocarbon, get it up there in the black so you can see it. And we're gonna take our slip sinker. It's got a hole penetrating both ends. Goes all the way through. And we're just gonna slide it on just like that. Then we're gonna let that just slide down the line out of our way. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our EWG hook here. We're gonna run the, the line through the eyelet. I always go pointed the, the hook side first, run the line through that way. And then we're gonna tie whatever knot. Now this is the knot I like to use for my Texas rig. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's a I call it a modified Berkeley knot because it's very similar. Run it back through. Pull that tag in back up like that. I'm gonna moisten that hook there or that line, and I'm gonna cinch that down and let it slide right down on my hook. And as you can see, it's nice and clean. It's just there, perfectly cinched down. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my little nippers here, and I'm gonna clip off the tag into that line fairly close to the knot. So there we go. Now, that's your, your basic setup. Got your weight over here, ready to go. Now, a lot of times I'll fish that with a peg on there, a bobber stopper or some sort like this here that's already on my line that I can slide down, which won't let that weight move. Obviously, the further away that is, that weight can move a little bit. It doesn't have to be right down on it. Give you a little bit of movement with your bait. This is really good if you're using a floating bait that'll let that come up off the bottom a little bit. Or for me, I like to I like to slide it all the way down and have it pegged right up next to the hook. Well, come here, sucker. So that when I'm flipping into some heavier cover or whatever, it'll penetrate straight down and through. So that's the basic setup of a Texas rig. Four. Now there's a million different baits that you can buy to Texas rig with. You have your Zoom brush hogs, great beginner bait, very easy to use, very easy to rig. You have your Yamamoto Cinco's, which you can rig with or without the weight, and they will catch fish both ways. Um, you can even wacky rig these, and I'll uh, get to that in just a moment to show you how to do that. But these things just catch fish year round. And then you have stuff like a worm, like this Grande Bass Rattlesnake. This is their six and a half inch mag rattlesnake, and it will catch fish. It's just a Texas rig worm that you'll throw out there, you know, work it along the bottom, work it through the cover or the weeds or whatever you wanna do. In this particular case, I'm gonna go with the brush hog to show you how to rig this sucker up. So we're gonna open up our bag. Just gonna pull out one of our brush hogs. This is a uh, watermelon colored brush hog. Gonna pick up our setup. Now I've loosened the peg on my weight or up on the line a little bit. That gives me a little bit more play when I'm rigging up the bait here because I don't want it right up next to it. So I'm gonna take my, my worm and I'm gonna go down the brush hog right from the tip and I'm just gonna penetrate it right to that bend, just like that. At that point, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that hook right back through and then slide that worm or that brush hog up and over that offset shank 
and right up over the eyelet just like that now some people like to leave that eyelet exposed because the weight will rattle against it i'm not telling you how to do it but i will say that i don't prefer that method because if the weight's moving if it's not pegged it will work on that line and it could cause a, a knot failure there the way i always rig it is i run it past the hook or a pass the knot then you want to measure where your hook comes across that particular bait so it comes across right there I'm gonna go ahead and put my fingers there to mark it I'm gonna bend that back and I'm gonna run that hook straight through the whole body of that bait and it's gonna come back through just like that now what I've got now is a very flat presentation the hooks barely exposed I'm just gonna pinch that that bait back a little bit and bury the tip in that in the uh, in the plastic so it's what we call Texas rig or or not exposed texposed or however you want to say it there's a bunch of different terms but it basically makes it weedless so that's your basic basic Texas rig setup then you throw that out there you work it along the bottom you work it through cover and you're gonna catch a lot of fish now with a bait like the stick bait, like a Yamamoto Cinco, you can do a couple of different things with it. Now the first method, you would rig it exactly the same way we rigged that last bait, which is called Texas rig. Again, you don't, you, you read it, rig it so it's weedless. You take your hook, you run it through the top end, just like that, back to that bend, pop it back through, slide your hook or your worm and your weight, or the, excuse me, the worm around the hook till it's straight around like that. We're gonna measure that spot again on that worm where it's gonna come up. Now it's really important with these stick baits like the Cinco's that you get them absolutely straight. It affects the way they fall through the water and everything else. So once we've got it rigged perfectly straight like that, we're gonna go and pinch it back, bury that tip in there again, giving it that full weedless presentation. So that's method number one. That's a standard Texas rig of rigging a Cinco. You don't even need to wait. Throw that sucker out there let it fall on a slack line it's going to wiggle and wobble through the water and it is going to get bit so be watching that line without that weight it's going to be hard to feel now, now the second style of fishing that we will fish with these these stick style baits these cinco style baits is called wacky rig and what that is is basically you're going to run a hook through somewhere in the middle i like to run it where it's pretty well balanced on both sides and and it, you just throw it through the water and it really wobbles a lot as it falls through the water column now a good place to to rig these to get that balance is right at the back of the of the egg sac section right there in the middle so it goes through the rib, ribbed areas to that egg sac in the middle and then it goes back so if you rig it at the back of that area and i'll just usually look look for the seam and run it perfectly through the back of the seam just like this and there you go, wacky rigged. Now in this particular case, I'm using a hook that has a weed guard on it. I'll bury that back, it comes right behind the barb and that gives it a good weedless presentation as well. And that's your wacky rig. Now if you're like me, when you first got into bass fishing, all you really wanted to probably throw was your crankbaits, your spinner baits, all those moving baits because you feel like you're covering a lot of water. It's a lot more productive. It's one of the reasons I love bass fishing so much. It's not that you're trolling around in a boat kind of waiting for the fish to bite. You're, you're bringing it to the fish. You're putting it in front of their face. This style of fishing, this Texas rig, is a put it in their face style of fishing. When you're flipping into that heavy cover around the docks with a Texas rig or a jig or something like that, you're putting that, that bait right in their wheelhouse right where they're going to be and it's going to get bit there's a reason the texas rig and similar style baits have been around and so productive for years still winning tournaments today is because they work it's a great bait for beginners to start with i highly recommend you get out there and try it give it a whirl yourself and see what you can do i hope you guys appreciate these videos you know we've covered kind of rods and reels we've covered some terminal tackle now we're covering the basics of texas rig here in some upcoming videos we're going to be talking about some moving baits getting into more advanced features more advanced styles of bass fishing to help you guys along the journey thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time